Uh, well, I would say that one is romantic literature, simply because that's um, something I've loved since I was a little kid. Uh, I was reading Byron's poetry when I was 10, and you know, may not have understood it, but I've, I've always loved it. Um, and I would also say that the Native American lit and culture is dear to me. Uh, um, it's a subject that, that's fascinated me for years, and, and also it's uh, a class in which students so often say that they have learned so much, that they've, they've gone literally from understanding nothing to understanding quite a bit about something that was invisible to them, so, so yeah. But really, I, the truth is I love to teach just about any class, um, aside from heavy grading, you know, in the, in the writing classes, uh, uh, the students are, are the reason, obviously. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a little story, and it has to do with that old cliche about those who can't teach. Uh, and when I was in high school, um, I heard that, and, and even though I, I had some teachers that were lifesavers for me, and I admired them and wanted to emulate them, uh, I kept hearing that phrase, and, and it turned me off. And so, um, you know, I uh, went out and worked in the business world for 14 years before I finally decided to go back and to grad school and to teach. And so, um, my curiosity and my, my passion for learning things um, are a motivation, and, and then the students are another thing. Um, as I often tell them when they say, how can you put up with us? Um, you know, what could be better than sitting in a classroom with a bunch of really smart young people and talking about important things? So that's plenty of motivation for me. <laughs> um, well, obviously, as, a, as an English person, uh, a language person, um, the first thing that came to my mind is just books in general. Um, uh, I, ever since I've been a little kid, to, to get a new book, to be able to open up it and, and smell it, practically made me high. And, and, and I think you'll find that there's a lot of English majors and non-English majors who are like that. Um, and even though books seem to be going the way of the dinosaurs, um, you know, they will survive. And uh, I'm, I'm even thinking when I retire of getting rid of my library and, um, you know, starting to read things uh, online. Uh, so books in general, and um, you know, uh, when I was younger, I used to be addicted to fiction, to novels, and uh, and since then, um, I, I love poetry. But uh, probably my favorite thing to read is is nonfiction, uh, whether it be history or psychology or medicine. Um, and of course, it's hard to think of any particular writers, but uh, um, I'm. Uh, fascinated by nature writing and uh, especially writing by um, people from the Southwest. So there's, there's a couple of writers, uh, Craig Childs and Ellen Malloy, whom, who are both local and just are absolutely fantastic uh, writers about the desert. So. Um, Well, I'm, um, I, I'm a person who adores the outdoors, you know, always have been, and I guess that's one good reason for me to be in Utah. Um, and so when I can't be out there, uh, or maybe when I'm not bold enough to do some of the things that these folks do, for example, um, you know, just sort of walk out into the wilderness for a month uh, on one's own, um, you can get that vicarious thrill from reading about it and, and reading really, really fine writers using amazing language to talk about it. Um. Um, okay, and uh, finally, of the, of the people you've read, of the writers that you've read mm -hmm. uh, in your life, um, what, what are one or two, who are one or two of those mm -hmm. that have had the most impact on the way that you view the world? <coughs> oh, that I view the world. Um, I'm not sure I was ready for the question to be posed that way, so I'll just try to, to think of a few writers 
who have been dear to me. And of, of course, I mentioned Childs and, and Malloy and uh, um, their view of, of just how essential uh, you know na nature and the outdoors is. Uh, obviously, jives with mine. Um, when I was uh, little, I read a comic book version of uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, and that book has always been so important to me uh, throughout my life. I read it over and over again, and of course I, I teach it, and uh, I think what must have struck me from the beginning, although I didn't know it at the time, was just the fact that you've got uh, um, a young woman in the 19th century uh, when women um, were very limited in, in what they could do or say or think or be, uh, a woman who is just boldly daring to think and say and want what women were not supposed to. Uh, and um, I just so admire the boldness and the passion of that character. Um, has, has some of that worn off on you? Um, well, I definitely have no problem calling myself a feminist. I mean, I have been ever since uh, I... Um, you know, I kind of grew up in the 60s and, and was aware of the, the feminist movement, but uh, um, from the time I worked at an accounting firm and had partners ask me to sit on their lap, I pretty much <laughs> became a feminist overnight. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's not so much a dirty word anymore. I'm finding more and more of my students, male and female, once they understand what the definition is, admit that they are too. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, I think you're going to like how that turned out. Ah, uh, 